Hello and welcome back to my wife's kitchen and this time we're going to learn look at a more complex structure uh, a plunging anticline or plunging syncline. So again we got the same three layers we've got the old and red the middle aged and yellow and the young layer in green representing rock layers. We're going to subject it to those compressive forces and we're going to end up with something that looks kind of like this except for now remembering that this formed deep underground now when it lifts, we're going to pretend that it tilted a bit as well too. And so when it gets to the surface, instead of being nice and flat like we saw before, it's actually going to be angled. And if the whole thing is angled and then weathered off flat, we're going to get a very different kind of pattern forming on the surface. And so I'm going to try and simulate that once again by cutting through the layers with the knife and hopefully avoiding my fingers. <coughs> And what we end up with on the surface are patterns that look kind of like this. And what we can see here, if we were to put strike and dip symbols on here, is that the strike and dip always face, or the dip angle always faces away from the older rock and points to the younger rock. So what we have over here is a plunging anticline or syncline. So you can see, is this an anticline? Yeah. And it's plunging, remembering that the whole thing tilted, that makes it a plunging anticline. And we can tell by these kind of oval shapes at the surface that we're dealing with a plunging anticline. And then what we'll do is we'll take the strike and dip symbols and we'll put them in the appropriate spot, say over here. And so here we can see that the dip angle definitely forms or, or definitely heads over that way. The strike line is going to be, again, in line with the fault or in line with that uh, separation between these two layers. And that's what we get. Notice, so the key here is that the dip angle points away from the older layer towards the younger layer. Let's take a look at a plunging uh, syncline, which is what we have here. And once again, if we take the strike and dip symbol, we can see that it always points, the dip angle always points away from the older rock and towards the younger rock. I think that's the phone. Hello? Yeah, just a minute, please. I'll get her. Hello. Sorry about that. I'm back. <clears throat> All right, so we were talking about strike and dip of plunging anticlines and plunging synclines. This is about as complex as it's going to get in this unit. I don't know if you can see that, okay? But we've got an anticline here, a syncline. Uh, and if, we, if we're able to see only from the side, there's no way looking at this that we could tell this is a plunging anticline or syncline. The only way to know for sure is to look at the surface. And from the surface view, if we start to see these kind of uh, oval shapes, then we know that we're dealing with plunging anticlines and synclines. From the side, we can see it's an anticline, syncline from the top. If we know that we've already, already got anticlines and synclines, those curves tell us that they're plunging. And finally, the lesson that we learned is that if we were to put strike and dip symbols, if we know the age of the rock, we can determine two things. Number one, if we know that the uh, middle, the middle, the inside of the uh, of the formation is old rock, uh, I always think old anti. That means that we're dealing with a plunging anticline. If it's young rock, I always think of the young sinner, and so that makes this a plunging syncline. Uh, but in either case, strike and dip symbols. We always point from the older rock to the younger rock. So it's gonna all, it's gonna curve around like this. I don't know if you can see that with the camera, but the dip and strike would actually go like this, all the way around like that. This layer would be exactly the same, where our strike and dip goes from the old rock to the young rock. All right, have a good night. Adios.